All right. Well, good morning, everybody. We are so sorry that we weren't able to go live this morning. We were having some technical difficulties with Zoom connecting to Facebook to push out live. So we've decided to just go ahead and record this and post it later, which you will see. Um, this morning, we have Todd Duff from Innovation Branding House. He is the founder and CEO of his company, which is Innovation Branding House, a nationally acclaimed, award-winning marketing firm in Paducah, Kentucky. He enjoys sharing his expertise in marketing and business strategy, and he also travels to seminars and conferences to speak on marketing tactics, business strategy, and effective goal setting. We are so thankful for Todd to be here with us this morning um, to share his story. So please help me welcome virtually Todd. Thank you, Tamala. So uh, this is typically done in a coffee shop, right? Yes. Where we all hang out and uh, swap stories and that kind of thing. So it's a different venue, but it's it's one that's worked out in all of our meetings in the past. So um, so for that, I've got my cup of coffee to uh, share with everybody uh, as we do this together. You probably have your cup too. Um, yeah. So one thing about that environment of being in a coffee shop is uh, you do get to share and talk. And right now we're, we're not actually live on Facebook. So as people see this, if they'll just type in a question, I'm gonna go back all day and look and I can address those and type them in. So it's kind of like we're live, but kind of like we're not. So uh, my, my main priority is that you get your questions answered, uh, whether it be marketing questions or business questions, because I kind of roll all those into one thing, um, business growth. And if you're, if you're serious about growing a business, then you market the business. So that's kind of how I uh, interweave both those. But um, yeah, I was asked today just to share uh, my story. And, and um, th that's kind of funny because I, I guess there's, story, there's a story there. When I think about story, I think of high highs and lows, lows. I mean, anytime we go to the movie theater, we are watching um, – a high high of something and then drops down and then comes back up at the end for um, a grand finish. So yeah, I guess there, everybody has a story um, and it's especially a business story if you're an entrepreneur, no matter where you are in it. So my story is uh, 20 years ago, um, I uh, went to, uh, to, I think it was Sears and bought a white button down shirt and a red tie and um, said I'm going to do a website design business because this website thing seems to be sticking around. So uh, I went out door to door businesses and I uh, would just say, hey, I think you might need a website. And they would, you, I would hear anything. So this was 99 or 2000. I would hear anything from, um, well, we, we, we don't need to get into that fad or I would hear, um, yeah, that sounds good, or we don't need one, whatever that was. But one thing that I did during that time is that I counted no's. Like, how many times do I hear the word no? And then when you count those, it's like you, I could never really get to like 50 no's before I would, I, my goal was like, I'm going to hear it 50 times. And then before I would get there, some, I, I engaged in conversation where somebody didn't need help with that. Um, the interesting thing, and I'm going to start the stopwatch uh, with a starting on a different, with a starting on a different time here. I don't want to go too far because I can tend to be a talker. So let's start my, my timer. But um, yeah, so going and finding a note, you know, the other part about when, when I started, I really didn't know anything about web design. I just knew that that was a, it, it was an opportunity and that people were going to need those. I loved the idea at that time. This seemed very simple to me. If I can get a, a server to host websites, um, and if I can charge those people 50 bucks a month for hosting the website, I can stack a bunch on there, then I could, I could uh, that's foreseeable. I could forecast my income, so then I could know uh, how much I would make a month. And in my mind, uh, as, as a newly married guy, um, I was like, hey, all we, all we really need is $2,000 a month uh, to live. So uh, through the business, because in taxes and expenses, I'm like, oh, we'll be okay. And I can quickly do the math and figure all that out. So it seems simple to me. Um, but I did not know anything about web design. I was fairly tech savvy, but, but didn't have that piece down. So when I sold the first one, 
I was like, okay, now we've got a new set of problems. And the problems are, I don't know how to do this. And I really don't know anything about graphic design. Uh, so I knew, I always pictured like web design was two pieces. It was this programmy part, this, this nerd uh, code thing. And then there was this uh, uh, art part that makes, makes it look appealing so people actually stay on the web page and read what you have to, to offer them. So step one is I went to uh, his office, uh, I was books a million or something like that. And I just bought one of those uh, big old um, Microsoft front page books. And I was like, I'm just gonna learn it this way. So I read the book and figured out enough to, to hobble something together that was solid with like five pages or whatever. Uh, but then the graphic part, I went over to the Murray State and it was summer. So I hired a uh, graphic designer and, and I would just email them and say, hey, make this thing bigger, make this thing smaller. So then I kind of put it together and that was my first website. Um, and that was out of my apartment. So out of the, the guest bedroom of the apartment. Now, I always thought that, that uh, having a business meant you had employees. So I always kind of divide it, I still do. Like if, if you have a business, you have people that are helping you with the business. Like it's a model that runs uh, either on its own or with your help, whatever, but that's the model of business. If it's just you, then you have a job. So if it's just, you can call it your own business, but technically it's you, you have a job with a lot of freedom. So if it's just me in the back bedroom uh, building websites, then that's my job and I'm the only employee. Uh, but as soon as I start to hire people, now I have a business. So uh, I hired a best friend and then they started helping me. One thing that, that, um, that, that helped is we, we got some, pretty strong work for, through like Pepsi Cola and Dippin' Dots and that kind of thing. And uh, that, that's, that, that money helped to start to uh, hire more people. And, you know, I'm sure all you know, you're always investing back in the business. So I just invested that money back in technology and software and, and all that kind of thing. Actually, remember, there was a point where I needed this software and this software was like $3,500 to buy it. And so uh, I finally had enough money to buy the software. I overnighted it, and for whatever reason, the post office called me and said, "Come get, come get your software." I drove over there and I put the software in the trunk, and I remember thinking, "Yeah, my car's worth eleven hundred dollars, and the software's thirty five hundred. So I guess I should. I don't know how insurance. If I have a wreck, I mean, I've lost the software versus lost my car. So anyway, just little stuff like that. I think you're always reinvesting and um, and that kind of thing. When when we mention story. Uh, we talk about high highs and low lows. Um, you know, there, I, I, I do miss the interaction. I uh, want to address uh, problems that you might have. I don't know what specific problems that, that you do have, but I, I do know that throughout business, you always have problems. So uh, one, one of my bigger problems, you know, when you think back to, either personal crisis in life or business, however that is, everybody can kind of think of a time that they said, oh my gosh, I've barely got through that, you know. Um, but at the same time, I think that's kind of a reference point. So when you have really bad experiences or really large hurdles to get over, you know, when you look back, um, you reference to that point and you're always going, or at least subconsciously, we're going, man, that was, that was really difficult. Now it's not as bad. Like we're always, now it's not as bad. With this COVID thing, we, we have been through way worse as a company. So as this happens, I go, oh man, remember when it was this bad in my head? And I'm like, we made it through that. This thing should be okay. So I think that's, that's a good thing for struggles. But I have a completely gross, disgusting story for you that, that um, uh, it's one of my references back of, of problems. So um, we had been in business, I guess, 10 years, and uh, I, I knew that we needed to make a big shift. We needed to rebrand ourselves because people were telling us things like, well, you're our, you're our best kept secret for design, and we were only known as a web place, and they would go, you're, you're our best kept secret for video, and they were naming all these services we were doing, and we were doing marketing. So to, to be the website company, it was called IVS Websites, and that, that company no longer described what we did. But um, so we rebranded, but something else we did, this was in the 08, 09 timeframe. So, you know, housing collapse and all this kind of stuff. 
So it was a, it was kind of a scary time because there was a lot of unknowns like now. So something I did, I decided that that now would be the time because everybody was contracting and they were scared and they were they were laying people off. We were watching the stock market drop and business was slowing down. And so I thought to myself, if if I can just scrape together barely enough capital, and this is at the ten year mark, that we can if we can buy a new building and if we can rebrand and we can move everybody and then then when this economy comes back, because it always does, when the economy comes back, we'll be very well positioned uh, to to topple competitors or to, to to beat people who are trying to take our share. Um, so. It worked out really well. Uh, we in 08, 09, we moved and we rebranded and we didn't lay anybody off and that kind of thing. Then when it came back, we were we were positioned very well. In that move, though, back to the disgusting part. In that move, so we buy this building and it, it, it's stressful. It's like this uh, three story. It's where we are now. It's just uh, I guess we went to like eight thousand square feet versus the smaller place we were. So we get in there. And we're all in there and we, we moved our stuff and we're still kind of getting calibrated, getting network going and all that kind of thing. There's just this stink. It's just this horrible, like, I thought it was because the building had been closed up. And my staff was going, man, something's not right, boss. And I'm like, I, it's a building's been closed up. My house is that way. Our house is closed up. And we just had to put some air pressures, open the windows. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, that just didn't go away. So like week two, week three, and it would go away a little bit and then it'll like come back. We're like, God, what does that stink? I'm like, man, we got, we had filters and all kinds of stuff. It would not go away. So I'm literally to the point where I'm, I'm peeling off parts of the wall. Okay. We got, z we got zero dollars in the checking and I own another property that we just came from. So we're leveraged like crazy. And I'm pulling the boards off the walls and I'm like, what is that stink? So finally, the last thing to do is to literally cut a hole in the floor because I've pulled wood off the walls. I've smelled, there's no broken pipes. So I take a circular saw, plunge it in the floor, cut a big square. And I've got a plumber there with me because he's trying to help me find it. And I cut this square, we lift the floor off and we look down in there and there's literally 20, 20 by 20 square of human feces. Wrap your head around how disgusting that is. There's flies and bugs. This plumber looks at me in the eyes and says, you're on your own on this one. And he walks out. So I've got a professional plumber who's like, "We are. I'm done, I'm out, good luck. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what is this? So this building we're in is like, it has four apartments above the office space. So a pipe had broken a long time ago. And so for a year or two, it was like just disgusting. So I'll find a plumbing company, a big plumbing company, come in and we keep working. Like I put plastic up over that room. We're having meetings. People are coming in. I'm like, oh, we're upgrading. I mean, they're like, good. I'm like, let's move in here. Like it was just, it was just horrible. So this plumbing company is working around the clock for like two weeks. It's such a disaster. They got to cut trenches in the back. They got to rerun piping. Just a mess. Well, I luckily check. I'm overinsured. I check all the boxes on the insurance policy. So I call my insurance guy and he goes, good news. You're one of those weirdos. You checked all the boxes. It's covered. So I got a check for like $45,000. Covered it. And we got new floors. But you talk about like that for, for three weeks, that was high stress. And I, I think... I literally got one of the best compliments I ever got uh, from my dad. He came in one evening to check. These guys are shoveling. They're, they've got the they've got plastic hung up everywhere. He comes in and he goes, he puts his arm around and he goes, son, I don't know how you're not medicated right now. And I thought, wow, this, you got to know my dad, Vietnam vet, tough guy. Okay. Um, so yeah, that, that is my, that's my reference point for tough times. Um, th th and there's, I think everybody has their stories on that. Uh, has, has not on, on literal feces being underneath your, um, 
your your uh, business, but everybody has their what they call what we what I, we refer to here as their own poo hole. All right, that's that is the point that that we reference back to. Um, so let's see, we're at eleven minutes, thirteen seconds. Um, yeah, it would be great if we had questions. Like I said, I'm going to jump back and hit things. Um, I did before we jumped on on the call over the last few days. I've been thinking about right now as a, as a twenty year business with twelve or thirteen or fourteen employees, whatever we have. Um, what are what are the things right now that I find most useful, or things that I wish I had known ten years ago, or fifteen years ago, or even twenty? Um, so just these are going to be random thoughts. Number one, as you think about your business and you think about competitors, take a really close look, write down a list of true competitors. And what I mean by that is it might not be a company that kind of does the same stuff you do. It, it might view it as something that takes dollars out of your pocket. And what I have learned is often it, it, it's the individual. In my case, it can be me. So what really gets in the way of business? What can I be doing better? How can I be stronger? And it's, it's almost like, you know, we know the things we should be doing as business owners. If, if we know we should be getting up earlier, then we need to do that. If we know we should exercise, if we know we should slow down in order to speed up, um, if we know, like, I'll tell you, and, and this is kind of a number, number two thing, or however you want to wrap this up, self-maintenance, the single best thing that I've done for my business and mental health uh, in this last year is something called journaling. So journaling it, it sounds like Dear diary, diary, and I fought it forever because I was like, I don't need to sit there with my thoughts and write stuff. But literally, the, the ability to sit down with pen and paper, and you can't type this stuff in, it's a mental thing, but to sit down and write in current time, current tense, how things are going. So in other words, to just say, right now, I am blank. Or and talk about the current status. Like if 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 you're journaling, your statement might be um, we we grew past what coronavirus did to our business and are at a better place. Like that would be a great statement because that will happen. And there's a there's a scientific um, reason that when you state that in current terms and you're the one doing it, it, it comes to fruition. Uh, so, I mean, this takes five to 10 minutes a day and I don't know, like, I'm a big podcast listener. So, uh, uh, Tim Ferriss, Joe Rogan, all the, all the good stuff. Something you'll notice is that, um, people who, who win and have businesses and, and just kill it, they have a meditation at some point during the day or the morning or whatever that is. And if it's journaling, if it's thoughts, if it's just getting ready, if it's, if, if meditation is a cold shower every morning without missing a day, whatever that is, there, there's something that, that in that bell curve of success and business, those front leaders all have that in common. So uh, that, that's my kind of journaling piece. Um, I think uh, number three, to have goals, like all, I think we all know we should have these things, but goals that are written down and placed somewhere where you can look at them. If it's under your keyboard, for, for me, it's on the wall, but just, and, and if you go, what is the next six months look like? <clears throat> and what, what does it feel like? And put those in, in, in present tense with a time frame six months or year, whatever that is, and you, there's no lack of how to do goals online, but it can be simple. You want to put it there and you want to see that on the regular basis because that can set your true north. 
for where your business is going and, and how, how it will navigate. Um, let's see, one, I got, a, I got a real random one here though. Um, there, there is a thing called DISC. It's, it's, it's an assessment for personalities. And I think that it, it's a little bit more work oriented, but it's D-I-S-C. And you can just Google DISC assessment. But, but a, a DISC assessment tells how you function and how you work best and the kind of people you work best with and how to work with people that, that you might not be uh, predisposed to work well with, if that's the right way to say it. So um, it, it, in our business, we, we've all taken a DISC assessment they're in a folder on the server and anyone can go look at anyone else's assessment. Now it's an assessment, so it's not a pass fail. It's like a box of crayons. There's not a, a yes or no, they're all crayons, they're just different colors. So, so think about it like that. But what we basically have is a way, any, any team member can look at any other team member's disc at any point and go, in, in order to communicate with this person better, um, they can look at and see their nuances and how they communicate. And that, when they're when they're being pushy, they're just excited, and when they're being shy, that's just how they are, or whatever that is. So uh, disc assessment. So yeah, if I, I tell you, if, ten years ago, if I'd known about journaling and disc, um, and and what true competition is, then uh, I'd, yeah, that, that stuff would be good to know. Um, so I, we're we're about eighteen or not, we're close to twenty minutes. I'm just gonna kind of wrap it up. If 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 this thing did go live, if there are questions, I'm not, I'm not looking at it. If anybody wants to kick me stuff, uh, that's fine. But other than that, um, Tamala, where are we? Well, we, if you're ready to wrap up, that's perfectly fine with yeah. me. I do have a few announcements that I'm going to make. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. So we have those slides up here. We have some exciting news, which some of you may have seen on Facebook. But we have another Innovate and Caffeinate community that's going to be joining us from Christian County. We will see their first speaker on May 13th. So we are very excited to get them on board with our um, Innovate and Caffeinate community. And if this is something that you are interested in, please, please reach out to Melanie Tapp. She is our regional Innovate and Caffeinate coordinator. And her email should be on the screen, but it's mtapp at westcentralky.com. She will get you started with any questions you may have, um, help you with logo design and everything like that. So if this is something that you would like to see to bring to your community, please reach out to her. And then for next week, we will have Chris Bruce, who is a CPA joining us from um, our Madisonville um, Hopkins County Innovate and Caffeinate. He will be talking about some of the things that small businesses might have with the CARES Act. I think that's what Melanie was telling me about. So please tune in next week. Hopefully we will have all of our technical difficulties fixed and we will be able to go Facebook Live next week. Um, again, thank you, Todd, so much for joining us today. Thank we you. Really appreciate you rolling with us today as we <laughs> experienced our first technical difficulties so always learning um, thank you so much and like Todd said he will be coming back to our comments feed throughout the day so if you do have any questions please write those in because we would love for him to be able to come back and answer some questions for us so thank you guys so much and we hope to see you next week live